The Whistler. Sit back and enjoy another strange story by The Whistler. I am the Whistler, and I know many things, for I walk by night. I know many strange tales hidden in the hearts of men and women who have stepped into the shadows. Yes, I know the nameless terrors of which they dare not speak. And now for the Whistler's strange story, Five Cent Call. It began simply with a telephone call. A five-cent call. Private investigator Scott Howell made his report to attorney Rick Parker. It was routine enough, at least when the conversation began. And Scott had felt when he dialed Rick's number that his assignment would be complete. Mission completed. Rick seemed to agree. Seemed pleased at Scott's first words into the phone. It's all taken care of, Rick. I rented the cottage about an hour ago. Uh, good work, Scott. Hey, I'll give you the address. 942 Ryder Street. Not a house near it. 942 Ryder Street. Yeah, sounds good, Scott. Yeah, I think this witness you want to hide will like it. There'll be no question. She can stay there on ice till you need her for trial. Fine. Anything else, boss man? Oh, no. No, no. Yeah, yeah. It's just this. Forget you ever worked on this. You're all paid. Yeah, very well paid. Oh, just a minute, Scott. Someone's at the door. Oh, sure. <clears throat> da 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 Rick! Rick, can you hear me? Ann. Ann. Rick! Operator. Operator. Operator? Give me the police. Right away. It's an emergency. You can't understand it, can you, Scott? The strange, violent scene that must have taken place at Rick Parker's apartment. You thought it was a lover's quarrel, just an exchange of words. But now you're certain it was something else, and you waste no time in contacting the police. Twenty minutes later, you're facing a man you've talked to before, Lieutenant Perez of Homicide. He's quiet, but gently insistent, isn't he, Scott? A man you wouldn't want to go up against. But he does seem satisfied with almost everything that you tell him. Yeah, that's all then, Scott. You phoned your client, Rick Parker, made your report. Yeah, that's right. Then he excused himself for a moment, stepped away from the telephone. Right, and then, then I heard the voice, an argument. With some woman. Yeah, that's it. Well, that's all I know, Lieutenant Perez. You, uh, didn't hear any mention of the woman's name? Name? Uh, why, no. No, I didn't. Rick just kind of, well, breathed into the phone, but he didn't answer when I called him. All right, thank you, Scott. Uh, For the call and the cooperation. Good night. Good night, Lieutenant. You wonder why you didn't mention Anne to Lieutenant Perez. But it's a part of your trade as a private investigator, not to tell everything to anyone. Besides, you sense that you're on to something, and you wonder who the name belongs to. This mysterious Anne. The answer comes the following day in the newspapers. Simple enough, Scott. Rick Parker was once married to a showgirl. Her name, Anne. The same Anne who was now married to a very prominent doctor. You smile as you read about it. Tell yourself that you and Anne must have a little talk. The next day you find the address and go there. Yes? Oh, hello. Hello. I, uh, I suppose you're Ann. I don't believe that we've ever met. Uh, no, we haven't met. Howell's the name, Scott Howell. Private investigator. Errand boy, messenger. Sorry, Mr. Howell, I've no errands to be run today. Uh-huh. And you can take your foot out of the door or I'll call my husband. Oh, he's not in. How did you... Ann, please, please, you think a thoroughly schooled and practicing private eye would make that mistake? What mistake? 
the one I want to discuss with you. What you were doing in another man's apartment last night. Now, would I discuss such a situation in front of your husband? <laughs> I happen to know Dr. Farrell's out of town. Who are you? I told you. Never I... mind. Come in. Oh, that's better. That's much better. Easier on the shoes. I'll, uh, I'll take water with my scotch, if you don't mind. I'm not getting you a drink, and you're not staying here long. Just long enough to, to tell... tell you exactly what I mean. Yes. You're in trouble, Anne. Because of... What happened to Rick Parker? Mm -hmm. I divorced him several years ago. I haven't seen him. I wasn't in his apartment. No? He spoke your name, baby. On the telephone. Telephone? Yeah, we were talking, Rick and I. He put the phone aside when you walked in. I heard the quarrel, the shots. I heard him say your name. His last words. Anne. Anne. Well? I have nothing to say. Ah, suit yourself. For now, I mean. I'll give you until tomorrow to think about it. Or? Or I go to the cops. Why? What are you mixing in for? Oh, please, Anne. Rick Parker was a client of mine. Paid me well, very well, for little jobs now and then. I lose some revenue, my bread and butter. Is that what you want? Well, <laughs> not exactly bread and butter. No, no. Now, I'll take that drink no. and... No. Uh, okay, okay. You don't want to be chummy, huh? All right, I'll go quietly. And stay quiet if you'll send me $5,000 by tomorrow night. Oh, you'll find me in the phone book. Take it over, Anne. Cheap, I'd say. You certainly are. You said you'd let me think about this. I think better alone, Mr. Howell. Do you mind? No, no, I can take a hint. But I'll be waiting, and none too patiently. Not too patiently at all. You wonder about Anne all that night, don't you, Scott? Because she doesn't seem to frighten very easily. Yes, Scott. You wonder a great deal about Anne and what she will do. But you have your answer the following evening when you arrive home. And there's an envelope in your mailbox addressed in a feminine hand. You open it, check the contents, and grin broadly. Five thousand. <laughs> Hello, Scott. Uh, oh, Oh, Lieutenant Perez, what's on your mind? Oh, just wanted to check a few more points on the Parker case. I missed you at your office. Yeah, yeah, I left early. I was wondering about that telephone call, Scott. How long would you say you and Rick Parker talked? Oh, maybe a minute at the most. And up until you heard that other voice, Parker seemed normal, not upset about anything? Hmm, that's right. I just wondered. All right, thank you, Scott. Not at all. Well, hmm? So you got a letter. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I belong to the Lonely Hearts Club, Lieutenant. Mm -hmm. And she loves you? Oh, she's crazy about me. We'll be exchanging pictures soon. That should put an end to it. Yeah. You're cute, too. <laughs> Think so, Scott? Maybe you should send her my picture. <laughs> Good night. Good night. Well, Scott, the payoff has begun, hasn't it? $5,000 in cash from Anne. And in the weeks that follow, it all falls into a familiar and lucrative pattern. You call on Anne again and again. And after each visit, the envelopes arrive with uh, additional payments. It's going beautifully, isn't it? Until one evening when the expected payment is not in the mailbox. And an hour later, someone knocks on the door of your yeah? apartment. Anne. That's right, Mr. Howell. You shouldn't have come here. We'll talk you... inside, if you don't mind. Mind? <laughs> it's a pleasure. I'll get right to it, Mr. Howell. Scott, your little game of blackmail is all over. Oh? Have you seen tonight's papers? Uh, well, just the funny. I hope you enjoyed them, because this isn't so funny. You see, the police are on the trail of a woman, Nora Ralston. She was seen leaving Rick's apartment. They say she had something to do with a case he was working on. Really? They're certain she killed Rick, and they expect to have her in custody by tomorrow. That changes my position, Scott. I'm no longer a possible suspect. Keep talking. Gladly. There isn't much to say. Just what I'll... I'll tell the police when... If they ask me. And that is? 
why I was in Rick's apartment at the time he was shot. You see, he was bothering me. Rick didn't seem to get the idea that an ex-husband is no more than that. Couldn't believe I really love the man I'm married to now. Yeah, well, I hope it's love with him, baby. He might not like the idea of where you were when he was out of town. I think he'll understand when I tell him why I did it. To protect him, his professional reputation. Like Caesar's wife. A doctor's wife must also be above suspicion. Yeah, but you're not. I told you, Rick called your name into the phone. I heard him. Anne. Certainly you did. When this girl came there, I hid in the other room. That's why I didn't see her. Rick was calling to me after she shot him. He was calling for help. Wait a minute. The truth, Scott. And the police will believe me, especially when they've arrested her. They'll believe me. Not you. Yeah, well, what about your husband? That bad publicity. If you go to the police, the newspapers the will have... The police will keep my name out of it, I'm sure. They'll be just as anxious to protect my husband's name as I was. And they'll be quite pleased to rid society of another blackmailer. I guess you win. Look. Look, I'll give you 5000 now, and in a couple of months that I'll give you some... That won't do. Mo- you only gave me one day. But I'll give you until the end of the week to return all of it. The whole 15000 But there's no place I can... That's g- too bad. Now that the shoe's on the other foot, it pinches. Doesn't it, Scott? Plenty. I'm sure it does. Remember... If you don't repay every cent by the end of the week, I go to the police and you go to prison. And now back to the whistler. In a sudden change of events, the tables have turned, haven't they? Your hold over Anne, Rick Parker's former wife, is wiped away. And she's insisting on the return of the money you've managed to take from her. You're going to have trouble returning Anne's money, because you've spent a great deal of it. And then suddenly your thoughts turn to Nora, Nora Ralston, the woman the police are looking for. And as you think about her, a plan begins to take shape in your mind. Yes. But before you can make a move, you've got to find her. In the days that follow, you use every trick you've ever known, checking every angle carefully. Finally, from Rick's former switchboard operator, you get what seems like a good lead. Late that evening, you return to your office and make a phone call. Hello? Hello, Nora. I'm sorry, you had the wrong... Hold it, sweetheart. This is Scott Howell. Still there? Yes. Guess you read about it in the papers, huh? I was talking to Rick when he was killed. Overheard him quarreling with his killer. I, uh, I read about it. I, uh, didn't tell the police what I overheard. That is, not all of it. Well, we talk it over? Where are you now? At the office. I'll meet you wherever you say. Golden Gate Park in an hour, back of the museum. Okay. I'll be driving a green convertible. It's a break, isn't it, Scott? After days of searching for Nora Ralston, you finally found her. And now you've an appointment to meet her. It's the chance that you've been waiting for. As you drive your convertible up Gary Street, you tell yourself you'll have to move with caution in dealing with Nora Ralston. A dangerous woman, isn't she, Scott? She's already killed one man. And now, hounded by the police, there's no telling what she'll do. A few minutes before eight, you drive into the park and find Nora waiting for you back at the museum alone. As she slides into the seat next to you, a gun suddenly appears in her hand. Just keep driving, Scott. What's the idea? The idea is I don't trust you. Oh, now look, baby. You wanted to talk, didn't you? All right. Drive out to the beach. We'll talk. (laughs) 
Uh, how about putting that gun away, sweetheart? All right. But first drop yours on the floor. Oh, sure, sure. Mm. Hey, uh... But let me warn you, if you have any ideas about leaving me face down in a ditch along the road, you better forget them. I took certain precautions. Such as? A letter, for one thing. If anything happens to me, it'll wind up in the hands of the police. It'll be a cinch for the gas chamber, baby. When you reported the murder to the police, why didn't you tell them then what you'd overheard? Well, I figured it was a little too choice to pass on. <laughs> Maybe I could use some of it at a later date. Like now. <laughs> a shakedown. That's what I thought. Call it anything you like. But I've got to have 10,000 bucks or I talk to the DA. 10,000? It's worth every cent of it. Listen, sweetheart, the cops don't have a thing on you. Sure, you were seen leaving Rick's apartment. But that doesn't prove you killed him. That's right, it doesn't. Well, then why did you run? Obvious, isn't it? Yeah. Because <laughs> you didn't know what I'd do. Huh? You didn't know whether I'd open up or not. See how important I am to you, baby? I could cinch this case against you. You are very important to me, Scott. But I don't even have enough cash to get me out of town as far as I want to go. How about your jewelry? I know you've got quite a bit. Rick was generous, real generous. Yes, Rick was generous. I still have every piece of jewelry he gave me. It's worth at least... Fifteen two. grand. I know. I got the stuff for him. It was hot, wasn't it? Well, not exactly, no. It was just sort of simmering. So you won't have much trouble getting rid of it? No trouble at all. Should bring around ten thousand. Ten thousand? Mm-hmm. Good. I was counting on your help. That's why I agreed to meet you. Help? What do you mean? I've got news for you, Scott. You're not going to blackmail me. But I'm willing to make a deal, convert my jewelry into cash, and I'll uh, split it with you. Split it? Oh, oh, oh no. Oh, I need the whole 10000 Don't be silly. I'll need at least five to get as far away from here as possible. You, you don't want the police to catch up to me, do you? Why should I care if they do? <laughs> Look, pal, I happen to know a lot about you, those deals with Rick. So what? For a smart lawyer, Rick talked too much. He told me about the deals the two of you pulled on some of his clients. That old man in Mill Valley, for instance, the will he left. $50,000 to Rick. A forgery, Scott. You had it done. You got a nice cut out of it. Now, wait a minute, wait. There were other deals, too. I could tell the DA all about them. An investigation could send you to San Quentin for uh, 30 years. So you see, you just can't afford to have me picked up by the police now, can you? No, I guess I can't. I'm being very generous, you know, giving you half the money, but then I need your help. And I'm willing to pay for it. Now, look, I've got to have 10000 No, Scott. Five. That's all. For that, you help me get out of town, and you'll keep your mouth shut. All right. Where's the jewelry? Drive me back to town. I'll pick it up and call you at your office, say, uh, around 10... You made up your mind instantly, didn't you, Scott? When Nora refused to give you more than $5,000, you knew exactly what you had to do. You need the 10000 to repay Ann Farrell, and that means you have to double-cross Nora. More than that, silence her forever. Because you can't take the chance of having her picked up by the police and talking. You're sitting at your desk waiting for Nora's call when a few minutes before 10, you have an unexpected visitor. Hello, Scott. Oh, Lieutenant Perez. Mind if I come in? Uh, well, I was just about ready to close up shop. What can I do for you? What do you know about Nora Ralston? What makes you think I know anything about her? I was just wondering. You were working for Rick Parker. Sure. He knew Nora Ralston quite well, I understand. Yeah, so I read in the papers. Rick ever talk to you about her? No. We never discussed his private life. And Nora was his private life. Oh, excuse me. Hello? Scott? Yeah. Uh, oh, it's Mrs. Ansley. Nora. Yeah, I know. You're not alone? Uh, no. Police? That's right. Uh, nothing to get alarmed about. <clears throat> Everything's going swell. Can you meet me? Of course, Mrs. Ansley. I'll be at the corner of Divisadero and Jackson in half an hour. Right. You'll be sure you're not followed. Don't worry, Mrs. Ansley. I won't be. Bye. That was a client, Lieutenant. Nice old lady from Philly. Well, as I was sure, saying... Sure, sure, sure. I'll be running along. Yeah, I'll walk out with you, Lieutenant. In the street, you watch Lieutenant Perez until he's out of sight. Then quickly you get into your car and drive into the Mission District. 
From time to time, you glance at your rearview mirror and finally swing across Market Street and up Fillmore. And then, certain you're not being followed, you turn into Jackson Street and pull up at the corner of Divisadero. Get in, Nora. You're late. I just wanted to make sure I wasn't being tailed. What's the suitcase for? Moving? You found me, didn't you? I thought it would be a smart idea to get out before the police did. Well, your troubles are over. Hmm? What do you mean? That little hideout Rick asked me to find. Oh? 942 Ryder Street. Rent's paid for a couple of months. Nice, quiet neighborhood. <laughs> You'll be quite safe there, baby. Until I can sell your jewelry. We'll drive over there now. Oh, by the way, got the jewelry with you? In the suitcase. Oh, fine. You're not going to try anything, are you, Scott? You're going to play it smart. Oh, very smart. You better... Or I'll make an awful lot of trouble for you. Yeah, I know, sweetheart. I know. Yes, you're well aware of that fact, aren't you, Scott? And as you drive up the road to 942 Ryder Street, you realize there's one thing you could do to pay back the money you owe Ann Farrell and prevent Nora from falling into the hands of the police and telling them all that she knows about you. Finally, you reach your destination. Bring the key out of your pocket. Open the back door of the cottage you'd rented for Rick Parker. Suddenly, as Nora walks past you, you reach out and grab her purse. Give me that. I, I want that gun of yours, baby. There we are. There, it's better. What's the idea? Obvious, isn't it? Oh, no, you... You wouldn't kill me, Scott. Of course not. You're going to commit suicide. With your own gun. Oh, Scott, you wouldn't do that. I, I know you wouldn't. That just goes to show how wrong a dame can be, sweetheart. The Whistler will return in just a moment with the strange ending to tonight's story. And now back to the Whistler. It's over, isn't it, Scott? Nora Ralston is dead. The police will find her body in the cottage in the remote little hideout, a suicide. The murder weapon, the same gun she used to kill Rick, will be in her hand, and the case will be closed. In a few days, you'll dispose of her jewelry quietly through your contacts. And you'll have enough money to pay Ann Farrell every cent you owe her. Keep her from going to the police, telling them that you were blackmailing her. Now you pick up Nora's body... Place it in a chair. And then as you're about to put the gun in her hand, you hear the door open behind you. Uh, Suddenly the lights go on. Hello, Scott. Lieutenant. Yeah, drop the gun. Mm -hmm. Nora Ralston. Well, well. Now look, Lieutenant Perez, Say I can tell Scott. you... Scott. You now we've been waiting for a long time for someone to show up here. Didn't expect you, though. What do you mean, waiting over? We've had this place watched since the night Rick Parker was killed. You've been watching this... Wait a minute, that can't be. How did you... How did we know about it? Simple. The night Rick was murdered, we found an address on his telephone pad. This address. It's your own fault, Scott. You should have realized when you give an address to someone over the phone, they usually write it down on the phone pad. Let that whistle be your signal for the whistler each Sunday night at the same time. Featured in tonight's story were Gerald Moore, Virginia Gregg, and Betty Lou Gerson. The Whistler was produced and directed by George W. Allen, with story by Adrian Jondo, music by Wilbur Hatch. Remember, at the same time next Sunday, another strange tale by The Whistler. This is Marvin Miller speaking. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System.